If you are wanting to be a penetration tester or a bug bounty hunter, then using chat GPT is going to be really important for you. So I was actually just playing around with some different things that it could do as they continue to update it and it's allowed to actually help you exploit stuff. It's becoming really helpful and it's way better than looking through Google for a really long time. And I was thinking that this is actually kind of a cheat code because those of us who actually had to go through the certification process and actually Google everything and read through it, it took a lot of time and this will save you a ton of time. So I got three tips I think you're gonna wanna know. And with the updates that OpenAI has made to their engine number four, I think that it's gonna be really helpful for you. There's some stuff that it can do now that it wasn't able to do maybe even six months ago. So let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened up Juice Shop because that is going to be our little playground that we're gonna be using. So one of the things that I thought would be really helpful to show you right off the bat is to just open a new tab and actually go to Juice shop but as we do this we're going to catch this over here in our proxy so we can just intercept the request and we can run it so now we can forward and we can start looking at things like this right here so we have this cookie so what you could do is send this over to repeater and i've already done this so you don't have to wait chat gbt is running really slowly this morning but what you do is you would just screenshot this entire request right here and then you can just come over to the search engine and you can paste it in right here. So the one I pasted in is a little different, but it would find the exact same thing. So we're using this cookie.io. So if you watched my previous video, then you saw I mentioned that we're probably up against something that is using Express, which is Node.js, because this IO is probably using WebSockets. So if you just screenshotted this and you came over to the GPT-4, and you pasted this in, you can see right here, we have this getsocket.io, and it is going to be the same thing that you see right here in this cookie. But anyway, I just said, can you figure out what this image is running? Is it running PHP or Node.js or something else? And it's gonna tell you, based on the information, it seems like it's running Node.js. This is gonna be really helpful for you, especially if you're trying to do like filter bypass with PHP, it's gonna be very specific and it's gonna be helpful to know if it's running something like PHP. It'll also help you when you're sorting through different possible entry points that you should be looking at the ones that is PHP. So you can usually just grab something that looks like this and you can just put it over in the GPT-4 search engine and you can just click this little upload image right here. You add the image and then you send it and it will try to figure out whatever it is you're asking it for. So that is one way that this is really helpful. Another is we can just shut that off. If we wanted to do something, so I've messed around with this little app enough that I know what I would want to look at. If we went to customer feedback, which we did previously, now I actually need to come back over here because we need to catch this in burp. So we can turn the interceptor on and we can go to customer feedback. We get this user name right here. So it's reset user, who am I? The who am I, I think is their way of trying to be funny and saying that we're the anonymous user, but you would just send this over to repeater or you can just screenshot this right here, which is what I did. And let's say we wanted to fuzz for this user right here. Maybe there are other users that we can get access to and we want to use fuff but we need to have a cookie in order to fuzz for it and we don't know how to use the fuff command or get the right syntax when we need to use fuff with a cookie. So what we could do, screenshot this, and I have already done this and you can see that it took three tries to actually get it right because OpenAI is running really slowly this morning. Uh, but basically I just uploaded this exact screenshot. You can see it right here. And I said using the screenshot, can you give me the fuff syntax to fuzz where the get parameter has who am I. So essentially we want to fuzz for other potential usernames and it gives us this syntax right here. And you can see like if we needed all of this, like let's say I thought maybe we just need the cookie, fuff wasn't working, then we could just put that in there and it's going to give us the full syntax in order to fuzz this. So we could just copy this and we could come over to our terminal and we can paste this in here. Let's see, we need to go back to change our word list. That was not what I wanted. We'll just cancel that, repaste it. And I think it's a command B, nope, option B. There we go, now we're moving a lot faster. So we can come all the way back here to the word list and we could use opt, set list, usernames, and let's see, I don't remember what it's called. We could just use top usernames and we could now run this 
and it's going to run for us. As Buff has finished, we can look at this, we get 500s all the way down, which means no other username is gonna work for us. But that is helpful to know. Maybe there was another user that we were gonna be able to look at, and I used a short word list, maybe we use a long word list. There might be another user that we can actually use in order to reach the feedback page. Right here, we can fuzz for this, who am I? You could also look for this admin. This would be a great spot to fuzz. So we got REST API admin. Maybe there's other, other files in here that the admin has access to that we could look at. So we might want to fuzz this as well. And I showed you how to do this with ChatGPT because if we wanted to, you really could come back over here and you could send this to Intruder and you could just, let's see, positions, use this right here and we could fuzz right there. But really, if we wanted to do something like that, you're gonna need Burp Pro, which is gonna cost money, or you're gonna need to shut down Burp and use Zap Proxy, or you could just use ChatGPT and you could get the fuzz command and you could come over here and fuzz it for free. So that is one way. Now here is one way that is really new and updated that I think is gonna be really helpful for you. If you want to be a penetration tester and you are trying to get any kind of certifications, I thought this was really cool. Chat GPT in the beginning when it first came out was super helpful and then they throttled it back and it wouldn't help you at all. And then you had to essentially come in here and say, hey, uh, I am a penetration tester or I'm an ethical hacker, can you help me with this? and it would help you. Sometimes you still have to do that, or you can just say like I did right here, I'm practicing SUID privilege escalation on hack the box. That way it's like I'm not trying to hack something um, that I shouldn't be. And this way it'll actually help me because if you're just trying to exploit something, it's not gonna help you. So you have to tell it like you're practicing or you're teaching and then it will help you. So I just grabbed this screenshot off of Google Images. And so we have this screen 450. This is from the LinPiece tool. So I basically just said, um, I'm practicing SUID privilege escalation uh, with Hack the Box. How would I use this? for SUID. Essentially, what can I do with this? And it starts going through everything. It starts out with the switch users and the mount and the unmount. And so I actually just stopped it and said, no, that's not what I want. Uh, the screen 450 is highlighted with LinPs as being vulnerable. How would I use that? Now, this is where it gets super helpful. Before, we would have to go out to Google and we would have to look for this screen version 4.5.0 and read through somebody's write-up on this in order to get this to work. But with ChatGPT, now you can just ask it with a screenshot, how do I exploit this? And it's gonna tell you. So we can just copy this, CD over to the temp file. We could just copy this and you could just paste this right in and it would put uh, the shell. So it's basically just gonna say bin bash. That's what we wanna use if it gets ran as sudo. And we're gonna put it in shell.sh. We're gonna make it so that way it can be executed. Then we're going to use LD preload and you could just copy this, paste it in, and then you would run min screen 4.5.0 and it's gonna automatically make you root. And it even tells you down here, if all goes well, you should be presented with a new shell running with the same permissions as screen, which is usually gonna be root, which is why LinPs had this highlighted right here for whoever that was that was running LinPs. So this is probably how it's going to be the most helpful for you. If you're a bug guiding hunter, you can now screenshot stuff from Burp and you can upload it into ChatGPT and ask it whatever information you want. You can ask it different syntax, what's running, if it sees anything that has got a known vulnerability. Uh, as a penetration tester or somebody who wants to go through the certification process, this is going to really speed things up because you can actually just screenshot the terminal and say, is there anything running in here that is not naturally on Windows or something that's been installed later? And it'll go through and just look at that image. Maybe you have a hundred different files and it'll tell you which three or four you actually need to focus on because in the beginning, you're not gonna be able to recognize what is typically running on Windows or what is typically running on Linux. And OpenAI is gonna be able to recognize that really quickly and tell you where to focus. It's gonna save you a ton of time. Finally, it can actually help you with the exploits as we've seen right here. So with that, let me know if you guys have any questions or you would like any more tips on using OpenAI in the penetration testing slash bug bounty hunting world. Thanks for watching.